Hey, what's up guys? I'm Anthony with Videvo, and unfortunately, there's no two ways about it. Lighting gear can be expensive. Even this simple three-point lighting setup I have up around me can run you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And sometimes, that's just not in the budget. So what I'm gonna do today is show you how you can replicate this three-point lighting setup with stuff you may have around your house for cheap or even free. Let's go. So one last thing before we get into it is to review what a three-point lighting setup is. A three-point lighting setup is the standard way to light your subject. And that's what I have built around me now, lighting me. A three-point lighting setup usually consists of the key, the main light that's lighting the subject, a fill to fill in the shadows on the shadow side, and a backlight that kind of separates the subject from the background. So as an example, I'm gonna show you what each one of these lights does individually, so you can kind of break down the process of what a three-point lighting setup does. So all I have on right now is my key light. This is our main source of light that we're building everything else around. This is the main light that's lighting the subject and providing most of the illumination. Now, I've turned on my fill light. The fill light is working in conjunction with the key light to fill in the shadows on the opposite side of my face. So if we didn't have this, you would see a lot more darker, deeper shadows on the shadow side of my face. This is what just a key light versus a key light and a fill light would look like. Lastly, this is my backlight. My backlight serves to separate the subject, me, from the background. Now this is what it looks like without a backlight and with a backlight. And as a pro tip, I like to contrast my key light with my backlight as far as color temperature is concerned. As you can see, I'm kind of a neutral white on my face, but my backlight is a much warmer color and it gives a little bit more depth, a little bit more texture. Okay, now let's really get into it. So our first thing we're gonna set up is our key light. And obviously you don't have this big giant key right in front of you, but what we do have is the biggest, freest light of them all, the sun. The big advantage of being able to use the sun is that it's free and it's super bright. Now the disadvantages is that it's not always available and it's subject to the location that you're filming at. Sometimes you just don't have access to giant windows or any available natural light. But for demonstration purposes, I do have a giant window directly in front of me and I'm gonna try to use that as our key here today. Luckily, it's super bright outside, so I'll be able to use full advantage of the sun today. All I have lighting me right now is the sunlight from the window. And as you can see, it's kind of a pretty good start. So what we can do is keep moving forward with just our sunlight as our key. But to take it one step further, I'm gonna soften up this light here. And that can be used by a few things you may just have laying around your house, whether it's a spare white bed sheet, shower curtain, or actually what I found at my local hardware store was just some painting drop cloths. And these were actually a lot cheaper than the shower curtain or the other cloths that I found around the store. And just using some simple painting tape I had laying around the house or that you could pick up right at your hardware store, you can just tape this along the side of your window. And what this does is create diffusion that softens up the light that's hitting my face. Here's a side by side before and after the diffusion I added. It may be a real subtle difference, but this is kind of the quality of light that we're going for. The only downside of using diffusion on the lights is that you lose a little bit of that brightness coming from that light source. Now we're ready to get our fill light in there. Like I said before, the fill fills in the shadows that the key light is creating. A really easy way to do that is to use a pre-existing lamp or light source that you already have that's movable around your house. For me, I have this really simple, cheap stand-up lamp that I think I got in college, and it still works to this day. So I just put in a bulb in it and brought it decently close to my face. And now we're bringing in those shadows on the opposite side of the key. The one downside to this is you don't really have control of the brightness or color temperature that this light is producing. One quick way to remedy that is to find a light bulb at your big box store that would match your key light. So for me, the key light that I'm matching is daylight, which is about 5,600 Kelvin. But unfortunately, the fill light I'm using right now is somewhere in the tungsten value of 3200. That's why you can see kind of that orange cast. Now, as you can see, with this new light bulb I got in, the color temperature is a lot more 
closer match to the sunlight and it's quite a bit brighter. So I'm filling in those shadows a little more than I was with the previous light bulb. If you wanna take this one step further, what you can really do is get a smart bulb or something that you can connect to your own Wi-Fi system. And a lot of those bulbs are able to actually change the color on a full RGB spectrum or just generally change the color temperature from warm to cool. Because sometimes you may not have your sun as your key light and you may have just have to use another light or lamp in your arsenal and you wanna be able to match those as best you can. Alternatively, if you don't have a spare lamp laying around, you could use something to bounce the light from your key and use that as a fill. Basically what I've done here is went to my local drugstore, bought a 18 by 24 poster board and set it up on this really simple uh, TV tray. And now what that's doing is bouncing the key light from that white piece of poster board back on the opposite side of my face. And here, here's a demonstration of what it looks like with and without it. It may be a little subtle, but it is a little bit of a punch that fills in those shadows that you're gonna want for your three point lighting setup. So the, really the downside of this is you don't have a broad swash of light that you're working with. You have to find the angle of your key light and use the bounce board in the correct direction to make sure that it bounces right into the subject's face. Finally, we have our backlight. And that might be the most difficult one to kind of put into your lighting situation because as I had my professional one set up, it's usually above and behind the subject. But it can just be a little more difficult if you have a generic lamp that you would normally put on a side table or uh, something like that. Luckily today, I have a stand-up lamp that I used before. So I'm gonna continue to use this white bounce as my fill and now use the standing lamp as my backlight. With a simple turn of the switch, my backlight is on. Fortunately for me, it's just bright enough to provide enough separation and definition on the backside of me that separates me from the background. And what I'm gonna do now is show you how you can provide a backlight that's in your frame that doesn't look like it shouldn't be there. This is what's called a practical light. A practical light is just what it sounds like. It's practical in the sense that it would be found within your picture frame. So here I have a lamp. It's nice and soft because it already has built-in diffusion in the globe that it's built in, and it can be set kind of anywhere in my desk. So I've taken this small little globe light here, and as you can see, it kind of fits somewhat naturally at the edge of my desk. As a practical light, it's also serving as the purpose of my backlight, which you can see it playing a little bit on my side here. The key takeaway here is that you are not limited by your budget. Although this may not work in a professional setting, if you're on a budget and you're at home and you want to make the best of what you have, this kind of gets you started. If you save a little bit money, there are budget friendly options as far as lighting is concerned, but this will get you most of the way there. Now, I hope you learned something today and I hope you were able to take away that you really don't need big, expensive professional lights to achieve something similar to my three point lighting setup. If you have any questions about this lighting setup here, about anything I didn't cover or any other DIY or filmmaking tips, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. And until next time, I'm Anthony with Videvo and I'll see you in the next one.